Hi everyone, welcome to Logic Base Labs. Hope you all are doing well. In this video, I am going to explain what Node.js is and how it actually works, but in a super simple way. If you are new to Node.js, this video is a must watch because once you get this, everything else will start to make sense. Don't worry, I am not going to bore you with deep technical stuff. My goal is to give you a clear picture of Node.js so you really get it. And please don't skip this thinking it's just a theory. Honestly, every upcoming Node.js video I make will rely on the foundation you build here. If your dream is to become a Node.js developer, the ideas we covered today will keep helping you again and again in your career. Jumping into Node.js code without understanding this is like trusting someone you have never ever met. Alright, let's not drag this out, let's dive right in. So, what is Node.js? The official site describes it as a free, open source tool that runs JavaScript outside the browser. With it, developers can build servers, web apps, common line tools, and even small scripts. It runs on Chrome's V8 engine, and there are two key things to notice here. The engine itself and what we call the runtime. Now, what's a runtime? Simply put, it's the place where code actually runs. Node.js is a runtime, not a language. That's the difference. JavaScript is the language. Node.js just gives JavaScript a home outside the browser, so it can do more than just run on a web page. And why was JavaScript created in the first place? To add life to web pages. HTML gives us structure, CSS adds style, but neither can make a page react or move. That's where JavaScript comes in. It made websites interactive, dynamic, and that's why it's called a programming language. Sir Brendan Eich is the creator of JavaScript. When he started working on it, the first thing he had to do was design a programming language. But just creating a language wasn't enough. There also needed to be something that could understand and run that language. In other words, he had to build a system that would allow the browser to take JavaScript code and execute it. Let's start with the first part, designing the language. While doing this, he had to define certain syntaxes. For example, take a function. Suppose the function name is my function and inside its body we write console.log. Any JavaScript developer would immediately recognize this and say, yes, this is a syntax of a JavaScript function. JavaScript has countless such syntaxes, just like every other programming language. This is what defines the language itself. Now, moving to the second part, how the language actually runs. For this, Brendan Eich and his team created the JavaScript engine. This engine takes in a .js file or JavaScript code and executes it. That means it programmatically runs the instructions written by the programmer. The creators of JavaScript specifically built this engine for browsers so that whenever a browser encounters a .js file, it can execute it with the help of the engine. In simple terms, the language and its syntax are what you write inside a .js file. That's the content. The runtime is what takes that content and executes it. But the runtime doesn't work alone. It operates within the browser's environment. A JavaScript developer writes code that interacts with the already loaded web page. This means the code needs access to elements like HTML, body, IMG, and so on, collectively known as the DOM or document object model. You can think of the DOM as a giant JavaScript object that represents the entire page. With access to the DOM, you can manipulate and change the page as you need it. So, imagine inside the browser, you have a JavaScript engine with access to the DOM. When you pass it a JavaScript file, your code through the engine gets access to the DOM and the window object. Different browsers implement different engines. Firefox uses SpiderMonkey, Chrome uses V8, Internet Explorer used Chakra, Safari uses JavaScript Core, etc. Because different runtimes behave slightly differently, JavaScript can execute differently across browsers. Hence, cross-browser issues comes in picture. Among all the engines out there, Google Chrome's V8 is one of the fastest. Inside Chrome, V8 normally runs with access to things like the DOM and the window object. But then a developer named Ryan Dahl had a bold idea. What if we pull this powerful engine out of the browser and run it somewhere else? That way, we are no longer limited to the browser environment. We can create a brand new context. This idea completely changed the game. Because V8 was open source and written in C++, Ryan was able to take its code, embed it into his own C++ project and build something new around it. 
that new layer gave him the ability to connect directly with the operating system, allowing access to the resource like the file system, the network and the memory, things a browser sandbox can't provide. And that's how Node.js was born, an open source project that uses V8 at its core. But instead of being tied to the browser, its context is now the operating system. This means when Node.js runs on a server, it can freely use the machine's resources. When Node.js runs on a server, it gets access to everything on that server. By now, you can clearly understand that Node.js is not a programming language. It's actually a C++ program that we can install and run on any machine, just like other software. Since it can work directly with the operating system, it can also run on a server because a server is nothing more than a remote computer that obviously has an operating system. So I hope there's no more confusion about what Node.js really is. If someone ever asks you what is Node.js, you can simply explain Node.js is a JavaScript runtime powered by the Chrome V8 engine and it can run on web servers. Up to this point, we have understood what Node.js is. Now let's look at how it actually works. To grasp that, we first need a quick overview of how a web server operates. A web server is where backend developers like us host web applications. A remote client, either a user's browser or a mobile app, connects to it. If the client is a browser, it generally expects HTML. In modern single-page applications, the HTML shell may already be on the client side, and the server is mainly asked for data through APIs. On the other hand, if the client is a mobile app, it typically doesn't need HTML at all. It only expects structured data, usually in JSON format, delivered through API calls. So, in simple terms, from the server, we request either HTML or data. To fulfill that request, the server might internally call other servers, query databases or interact with the file system. And after some processing, it sends back a response to the client. If you ask the server something simple like what is 1 plus 2, it can calculate the answer right away and return 3. That's just pure CPU work, no waiting on anything else. But if the server has to grab data from a database, call another server or read from a file, that becomes an I.O. heavy task. Those tasks take more time, maybe 3 seconds or more. Now the big question is, what happens if multiple clients send requests at the same time? Let's take Java as an example. A Tomcat server handles multiple requests using multiple threads. I won't go deep into what threads actually are, but if you are not familiar, you can think of them as tiny processors or small programs. The Tomcat server usually keeps a pool of threads ready in advance. When a new request comes in, it gets assigned to one of those threads. So if five requests arrived at the same time, five different threads are used and they all run in parallel, returning responses right away. Sounds pretty cool, right? But here's the catch. By default, Tomcat has 200 threads. That means it can serve up to 200 user requests at once. If more requests arrive beyond that, the extra one have to wait in line. You can increase the number of threads if you add more resources, but there's always a practical limit to how many threads you can actually run. Now back to Node.js. JavaScript is traditionally single-threaded programming language. There is no extra threading. All the requests or tasks are handled by the one main thread. So how can it handle multiple concurrent requests without one long I/O operation blocking others? Ryan Dahl could have introduced true multi-threading directly into JavaScript, but that would have fundamentally changed the nature of the programming language itself. Instead, he chose to keep a single main thread for JavaScript execution and hand off I.O. tasks to the operating system using asynchronous non-blocking mechanisms. Now, let's go back to our earlier scenario. We all know JavaScript is single threaded, right? That means all requests are handled by the main thread. Imagine a user makes a request to your Node.js server and that request takes 5 seconds to complete. The user will get the response after 5 seconds. But what happens if another request comes in while the first one is still being processed? In that case, the second user won't get a response until after 10 seconds. The first 5 seconds are spent generally for the first response and the next 5 seconds are used for the second one. Now imagine 100 requests coming in at the same time. What happens then? There's still only one thread. As you can see, this quickly becomes a very complicated situation. 
But does that mean Node.js is a bad choice as a web server? Not at all. If that were the case, Node.js would never have become so popular. The truth is, Node.js handles these situations in a completely different way. So, Node.js is a single threaded runtime and its primary job is to accept user requests. Node.js essentially says, why should I do all the heavy work myself? My main responsibility is to accept incoming requests. The long running tasks can be handled by my assistants. This means the single thread in Node.js will properly receive requests but won't block or wait while generating the output. That's the game changing idea. Requests don't block the single thread. Now, how does Node.js achieve this? It relies on two core concepts, asynchronous operations and non-blocking I.O. Non-blocking I.O. means when Node.js receives a request involving a time-consuming operation like a database query or reading and writing large files, it passes that task to its assistants, often referred to as workers. Once the task is handed off, Node.js doesn't wait for the worker to finish. Instead, it immediately returns to listening for and accepting new requests. So, imagine user 1 sends a request. That request is handed to a worker for processing, and the main thread is now free again. While the worker is still busy handling user 1's task, a new request from user 2 arrives. Because the main thread isn't stuck producing user 1's response, it can smoothly accept user 2's request, assign the task to another worker, and once again free itself up to keep accepting more requests. This is how Node.js manages to handle many concurrent requests efficiently, even with a single thread. So, this is non-blocking behavior of Node.js. Now imagine this, a request needs heavy pure CPU intensive work, for example, summing numbers from 1 to 1 million, or image processing, machine learning inference, big data crunching. Focus here carefully, it's not an IO intensive work, it's a CPU intensive work. That means main thread has to process that request. So once again, if the single thread itself is tied up with a heavy job, it will block other incoming JavaScript tasks. That's why Node.js isn't the best choice for CPU bound workloads, unless you offload them or break them down into smaller parts. On the other hand, when it comes to the IO bound tasks like database queries, network requests or file operations, Node.js really shines. But don't get the wrong idea. This doesn't mean Node.js can't handle CPU intensive work. By CPU intensive, I am referring to tasks that require very high competitive processing power. Let's return to the previous example once more. When we handed off the task to the worker, we didn't immediately get a response from them, nor did we send any response back to the user. So what happens when a worker finished its job? This is where the concept of asynchronous or callback comes in. Once a worker completes its task, it triggers a callback. A callback is essentially a notification or event that the job is done. That's why Node.js is often described as having an event-driven architecture. Through callbacks, we can programmatically receive a notification when a worker has completed its heavy processing and at that point, we define what happens next. This is what makes it asynchronous, meaning it doesn't block or follow the synchronous execution of the main thread, but instead maintains order and execution flow internally in its own way. I won't dive deeper into the topic of asynchronous programming right now because it's quite broad on its own. If you are interested, I can create a detailed and advanced video tutorial dedicated entirely to that subject. Just let me know in the comments if you would like to see that tutorial. When we are learning Node.js, it's absolutely essential to talk about the event loop. This is one of the core internals that every Node.js developer needs to understand. So far, we have seen Node.js handle both synchronous and asynchronous tasks. But who's actually controlling all of that behavior? How does a single thread manage and coordinates long running IO intensive operations? The answer lies in the event loop. You can think of the event loop as an infinite while loop that's always running in the background, constantly checking for tasks that need attention. Its job is to keep waiting for new tasks and one by one forward them to the appropriate place when required. To do this, it relies on several components. The task queue, the task pool, the completed task queue, and the event loop itself. The task queue holds all the pending tasks that are waiting to be executed. From there, tasks are sent into the thread pool one at a time for processing. 
at its core, the event loop is a simple concept to grasp, though there are many more details and deeper mechanics you can explore. If you would like, I can create a separate in-depth video dedicated to exploring the event loop in detail. But for now, here's the key idea. The event loop runs continuously like a while loop, keeps track of long-running tasks through the task queue, assigns them to available threads in the thread pool, and when those tasks are completed, it passes the results back to the main thread. This mechanism is what makes Node.js highly available and extremely efficient as a web server. But there's one more thing to understand. The thread pool and event loop are mainly designed to handle I.O. intensive tasks. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to CPU intensive operations, the main thread can still get blocked. However, in the latest versions of Node.js, the team introduced the concept of worker threads. With worker threads, we can now perform CPU intensive tasks without blocking the main thread. This is a more advanced topic and I already have a separate video on Node.js worker threads where I explain how to handle these kinds of CPU heavy operations. The link to that video is in the video description. By leveraging worker threads, I truly believe Node.js has the potential to expand beyond web servers and play a significant role in areas like image processing and even machine learning in the near future. Finally, you might be wondering, if Node.js is single-threaded, then where do these workers actually come from? The answer is libuv. It's a special library written in C++. The library leverages the operating system kernel to provide the underlying threads that handle I.O. operations. JavaScript itself always runs on a single main thread. But Node.js through libuv can handle multiple I.O. operations by utilizing multiple threads in the background. So the assistants I mentioned earlier are nothing but threads working behind the scene. When a user sends a request to the server, the server itself operates as if it's running on a single thread. But in the background, it leverages the power of multi-threading through its workers. This clever and powerful design is what makes Node.js blazing fast, highly performant and incredibly flexible. That's what Node.js is and how it works. If you have followed along to this point, thank you. I hope the overall picture of Node.js is now clear to you. If you found it helpful, share it, subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss future videos. Take care. See you next time.